You wanna buy some acid? Listen, you fuckers, you screwheads. Fuck them, we got chance! I'm looking my chest, I'm looking my triceps, I'm looking the back of my calves, and I'm looking my heart, and I'm looking my lungs. I'm looking my buttocks. <laughs> I'll tell you what, BK, why don't you just take your mama home some chicken, and then I won't have to stuff my boot all up in your ass. Believe, which by the way, this is what Hitler believed. As a dude, I'm gonna be honest with you. This is something that cannot be on the podcast. Are we being recorded? I'm testing microphone range. I'm looking at the. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. I'll say it. Hitler was a devout Christian. Now, his entire crusade, all of it, he was actually looking for relics. From the holy days, from the days of Jesus. He believed, and this is why, because he was a member of a society that believed this. He believed that Jesus was an alien, that Jesus was part of a race known as the Aryans. This is a theory my dad has had when he was drunk, along with it's Jesus being your dad a magician had. like David Copperfield. It's not, it's not one your dad had, it's. The reality of it is that Hitler did find a few of these, those things. That's why we know this, that he was actually doing it. It's not just some shit that was made up. Uh, like, the spear that uh, supposedly pierced Jesus, yeah, all that. He supposedly had the Holy Grail and a few other things, the crown of thorns. Um... I don't. Ne I never confirm anything. Very few things as being actual historical facts. If I'm n not there to witness them, like as far as finding holy, I'm not saying there aren't. You know, leftover the things. Of, I'm not saying there the aren't leftover of, things from those days. The name of the society that you were part of was called Brood, and they were German elite. But their if you their names are not. If known. you're if so you're just some, it's kind of one of those things. It's like yeah. This whole thing could have just been made up, but it's it's pretty widespread and documented. Well, even when you go, if you go with the whole like banality of evil concept of Nazis, they're like the fewer wants to find relics from the Holy Grail. Well, what if I don't find relics from the Holy Grail? Yeah, he'll that, probably find kill you. Something that fucking looks like. Well, yeah, it. find some old shit, wrap it up, call it the crown of thorns. What is this? A, a How old is this chalice? A couple of thousand. Crown we'll of say thorns. we'll say we got it from fucking Jerusalem of out of Jesus's dead hand. Whatever the fucking viewer wants to hear, give him this piece of shit and tell him tell him Jesus drank out of it. It's like, a great example though. Like the crown of thorns is just not at all what it's been interpreted to be. <clears throat> The crown of thorns is meant to describe something a little bit different. I can't really remember exactly what it is. It was one of those things that was lost in translation, but the thorn, as it's, as it was said, was meant to represent the power of God, of Yeshua. And all this other fucking cryptic bullshit. Why are we gonna? Why do we need to keep this a secret? Or like Vatican ninjas gonna come kill us? Like, oh no! I mean, I wasn't planning on keeping this. But I really, like I said, I was testing the mic. Oh, we need, we need to test it. I'm, I'm but I can totally, totally I can not, totally tell not the ready. Sound waves that's being picked up. Totally not ready to actually like. I, I want to do a little bit more research, but. I, I, my understanding I suck at intros. My understanding anything, is so. that my understanding of this is that he uh really fucking good kid too. Like 
fucking Hitler. Like, he was like a, he was raised. Well, he was into discipline. Well, he was, he was very disciplined growing up. He was raised in a very, like, very, like, Bible loving family. And, I mean, it shows. Now, all that being said, one can't help but to wonder, like, why? Why does that, does that connection even exist? And if so, why isn't it more deeply explored? Yeah. Now, is it bullshit? No, yeah, right. you know what it could possibly be, it, it, but you know, considering that I've relearned history from a more, uh, what I feel is a more factual perspective since I've graduated or since I got out of high school, dude, it could all be bullshit. Like a lot of what we, uh, a lot of what we learned. What the shit happened so long ago, it all might as well be fucking fiction anyway. But the point that I've made with why it's important is kind of rearing its ugly head now. I I, I I think there's things in the Bible that, in the story part of it, that did happen. Now, whether or not they're accurate, I'm sure they're accurate in the same way that Tombstone is accurate to what actually happened at the OK Corral. Well, I mean, there is shit left out. Like, for instance, like, uh, I don't remember the actual characters that, involved. I think it was, like, Lot, Lot and his wife, the lady that turned into the pillar of salt because she looked back at the, uh, the village and all that. Like, those people, I believe, just went over there and burnt Sodom and Gomorrah down. For probably the same type of shit that... You know, we're going through, people go through now with the, you know, trans nonsense. Or really, the Q plus A, anything uh, past if, the T is trouble. If what's man. going on now is anything to do with, it's anything like Sodom and Gomorrah, then it's, I would think it's safe to say that Sodom and Gomorrah didn't use, uh, didn't use the subterfuge. I mean, you know, there, there was no, there, there was no, from my understanding well, of that entire thing, is it was whatever people were doing back then, was, they weren't good at it. That that's kind of the point. It's all of mankind's first lessons. It's just kind of how I look at the Bible. They were fucking so, goats. Whether you in believe public in the middle of the street in, Sunday mornings. See that that's my. I had this. That's probably what it was. I kind of had this epiphany one time when I was scrolling through Twitter, and there was a video of uh, this dude banging this girl over a guardrail while cars were just driving by. And I just went, you know what? I get why they burnt that fuck. I, I get why I saw the Gamora got burnt down. Because of shit like this. It's like, look, if you guys just stayed in your village and fucked each other, uh, that would be fine. But you kept bringing it to, like, their neighborhood. Like, you keep showing up Sunday morning at church with cum all over your face just to get on everyone's nerves. The fuck do you expect to happen? You know? Now, this isn't related, but fuck it, it is, and we're just talking, I don't so care it doesn't got any subjects, I don't give a shit, but yeah, we need to do this, so I know what I need to work on. I, it really, it, through meditation, through lucid dreaming, through what a lot of people call uh, astral projection, but I don't really believe in astral projection. Uh, I believe it's the same thing as dreaming, which they do too, but it's overwhelmingly exaggerated when you hear fucking Wiccans talk about it. It's, it sounds to me like most Wiccans go, I'm going to go to sleep and I'm going to dream that I'm playing Final Fantasy. And that's what they fucking do. And they're just dream lucid dreaming. But astral projecting, I mean, there's a whole nother, that's a whole nother layer of meditation. That's a layer of meditation. It takes, it takes years to do it intentionally, but I believe that I, I well, actually, I know 
I was achieving it from a very young age on accident whenever I would sleep sometimes. Specifically when I would sleep in a weird spot. Like fall asleep in the living room watching cartoons. And the deities that I would worship if worship was really a thing that is required by me, but it's not. They are in those worlds. They are in the reality that I am in when I lucid dream. I've spoken to one of them. That's it. And I'll tell you what he said. That's what he said. Uh, what it meant? Fuck. It, it was... More or less, it felt like it was a, a welcoming. Like, hey, you found me. I'm. I was. I was in here. I was in deep inside your subconscious. I was here, and that's what I think God is. I think that if God exists, He's inside of our subconscious. He's a power that exists within us. He's the thing that makes us. That literally the thing that makes us wake up every morning. Fucking wash our balls, take a shit, and go to work. He, he's a he, he's God itself. Uh, like you cannot say that when you put an image of a man in the clouds in a person's head, and you say you're going to listen to what this man does, no matter. Of course, you've got hundreds and thousands of fucking people who are atheists now, because that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous from the get go too, because these are people who have all grown up thinking, okay gods and goddesses and all that that's bullshit and we've also you've also been putting that in their heads that there's only one god so if there's gods and goddesses that's bullshit i mean like it's like wait 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 what so just you're you know what i'm saying it's from the from a fundamental standpoint it's just flawed out of the gate and most people who follow it, it they know this See, this is where I've come to understand Christianity. See, it's just like a Wiccan doesn't have to believe in Sir Nunos or fucking Gaia. A Wiccan doesn't have to pray to any god. A Christian, most, I want to honestly say, they don't believe in God. But, like you're trying to describe, they believe in what the Bible taught them. And they believe in the values that they were taught by Christianity. Now, I find nothing wrong with that, and I I feel like it'd be it'd be better if they were a little bit more honest about it. Because here I am as a Wiccan, and I'm going to call out all the Wiccans, everybody, you all. If you're a reasonable fucking Wiccan, then you're like me, and you live your life on the basis of Wicca. You follow the twenty six goddamn commandments that we have, as opposed to the fucking twelve that Christianity has, which, by the way, are really the same commandments as Christianity. It's just the only reason there's 26 of them is because we put more emphasis on respecting life. It's, thou shalt not kill is kind of repeated a couple of times, you know, to kind of put emphasis on why thou shalt not kill. Again, too, it's like, this shit was written in the fucking 70s. Like, uh, like, just putting it all on the table, modern-day Wicca isn't really an old religion. And most people who practice, like, I've, I've gone on to, like, Wiccan chat rooms, or Wiccan, like, I joined a Wiccan group on Facebook, like, a couple of years ago, and I'll, in a moment I'll tell you what made me leave it. <laughs> and... A kitchen witch is not a thing. There's no such fucking thing. That sounds it, like an appliance. <laughs> the kitchen witch. Dude, it's what it is, is just women who want to call themselves Wiccan and they have families. So they're like, and they, and they're like, well, you know, I don't do anything magical or anything. And it's like, well, I, you know, I, my magic is in the kitchen. And it's like, no, that's called fucking cooking. It's just called cooking. It's not magic. It's art, but it's not magic. It, it, magic is like 
Is another. I just keep picturing an infomercial, and it starts with some lady chopping her finger off. Do you have this problem when you cut lettuce? You won't with the kitchen witch. Magic is misunderstood too a lot of the times. When a Christian is doing a sacrament, they're performing magic. It's the same thing. When they're praying, it's the same thing. Just like that can help a Christian get through hard things. It, the way that a Wiccan performs magic, depending on the person, get them through some hard shit. And meditation. A lot of self, the self-realization is important. And I'm really, really scared that if I was to delve deeper into the New Age Wiccan community, I'd find a lot of this fucking socialist bullshit. Now, oh, the yeah. reason that I left that certain group is so I was trying to bestow some wisdom on these poor fucking people. And I got on there one day and I saw a post. Does anybody know where I can buy any witchy clothes? I said, here's what you do. <laughs> you go out into the woods and you start gathering all kinds of leaves, sticks, twigs. Whatever you can find as part of nature will make you just smell like a tree. You just want to smell like a tree. It doesn't have to be a good smelling one. And then you go to your nearest fucking fabric store and buy the ugliest fucking rags you can. Then you better get some needles and thread and learn how to sew. That's what Wiccan clothes would Religion be. Religion is basically... It's like... It, it, I was trying to make it make a point. I'm I'm hardcore fucking Wiccan. I've been this for a long time. And I wear band t-shirts and horror movie t-shirts. Go fuck yourself with your Wiccan clothes. Where can you work and I buy witchy clothes? I mean, you have no respect for your faith that you use the word witchy. Really, religion is more like a uh, behavioral diet plan. Yeah, that's basically what it is. That's why I chose mine fucking carefully, sir. Because I never... Uh, as I mean, I get it from that standpoint. As far as a magic dude in the sky, I have a theory... I'm not even going to say that's not possible. I'm saying that that ideology is really what, what throws a lot of people I don't, completely off. I don't think If Christians what, want to increase their numbers, they need to accept what kind of like the ideology that God doesn't really exist that way as a person that you can talk to. It's more of I, a, When you... I think it would be like meeting your favorite rock star and finding out that he's kind of normal and here's a good. Here's an example. Here's the closest... The, a non somebody who's not spiritual who doesn't meditate doesn't lose a dream anything like that the closest you have ever been to God is if you're you know going at it with a woman and you know that like this particular woman you get pregnant and you just fucking right inside her and you're like deep you know that's as close to that feeling you get right there that you feel it. It's not just like your regular orgasm. It's like you have a brain orgasm, and it and it's almost shaped like like a blip, like a blip on a, and you can feel it going like exploding out of your head and going, and it's that is the frequency. That's God going, hey bitch, this is what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be coming to that bitch and making babies. Like that to get to what we're supposed to be doing. I mean, yeah, I don't want to have kids, but I mean, maybe. I'm more open to that now than I've ever been. I've been a little more... Actually, I've been told Diana recently, you know, that I... I'm, the only thing that keeps me from wanting to have kids is the fear that I couldn't be as financially responsible, but that's what always every expert says. That fear is what would make you a good parent. It's like the mother's fear My that she problem, would be a terrible mother. Those I, are the ones that turn out being I like the idea mothers. of being a parent raising a kid. Like, I've warmed up more to it lately. The problem is, is <clears> once <throat> you have a relationship and bring a kid into the world, you're basically just handing this bitch a gun and going, hang on, sweetie, let me load it. Let me cock it. Point it right at me now. Please don't shoot me. I love you. <laughs> Because that kid is not just your son, your child anymore. It is her best weapon to ruin your life. And the fucking law will help her do it mm -hmm. in 
every way imaginable. Absolutely. And while I, and, while and she I wish, points that gun at you, I the wish, law whispers in your ear, you can get more money if he wasn't in the house. Pull the fucking trigger. He's a, he's a piece of shit. He's a white piece of shit. Pull the fucking trigger. Yeah, you know, and, and, and you're right. Quadruple food stamps if you can get another baby daddy by this December. <laughs> like, it... If... Man, I just wish so bad that I could sit here and just be like, you're wrong, you're wrong as fuck. It's, it's, the one, it's just not like that, but man, it, it's so like It that. is the one thing that would fix society, but it's the worst fucking advice to give a dude is, go get a, go have a family. It's like, well, yeah, go, go try. I was like the Charlie Kirk advice. I don't really, I, it's an intoxicating idea. Actually, it's it's an exciting idea, and I actually think that it's a positive thing for him to be telling these young socialists is do the opposite of everything you're being told to do right now. Drop out of school. Find a woman. Have some kids. In fact, you know, the way he put it, I love it. He said, have an insane amount of kids. Have a Mormon amount of kids, and then take you, yourself, and pull yourself into an industry or a field that you have no knowledge of, going completely blind and live your life like that every day, and that is how you're happy. And I'm like, you know what? As crazy as it fucking sounds, I mean, yeah. The the life that he just described is just the fucking epitome of, of human happiness. You know what makes humans unhappy? One of the things that makes humans unhappy, you... Diarrhea on the wall, so get off. She did. God yeah. damn it. One of the things that makes humans unhappy, and I found this to be true for myself, boredom. I'm never bored anymore, man. I don't let myself. Like, if I'm bored, it's nap time. Like, there's no such thing as boredom. Your boredom's a construct of your own laziness or your own inability to make yourself get up. You know, I don't like that fire up on here uh, sometimes. Like, I'm trying to, I've been working out at work when it's slow. I've been taking, going up against the counter and doing push ups. Yesterday I did, uh, I started doing 20, 20, 20. Today I did 50. Tomorrow I'm going to bust out 100. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you, the reason I did this is because I was like, I'm tired of being bored and. I can sit here and think all day and think all day, but there's something else missing, and I need to fix it, and I figured out, like, I need to work out. I just have this fucking job where I do the work, and it's done, and I sit on my fucking ass, and I need to work out. So I just started doing push-ups, because like, I'm not going to get on that fucking floor. That's gross. And do it. Uh, but I, I do them up against the counter, which I feel like is more effective. You get more, more weight up against you. you you get more gravity. Anyway, but the point is, you need uh, getting yourself outside of your normal thought, your normal everything. You know, it's good. Um, I don't know why I got there. Oh, yeah, anyway, my God theory really is just I'm just looking at the pattern. Everything else, that chain of existence seems to follow, which is. Small matter, ato or atomic matter, small matter, turning into bigger matter with shit living on top of it, with shit living inside of it, and shit living within it. And that just keeps going. And on a certain scale, us, even with as much of this shit like we can see in space, we don't get to see the next stage of whatever cellular goo we are making up collectively without realizing it because once you you know back up far enough from anything it just becomes kind of a gelat but anyway uh if there is a god entity it's a thing we live inside of that we are part of some kind part of its biological function somehow like maybe our consciousness serves a purpose to the rest of its body like it's the memory cells, brain cells, or creativity cells, something like that that we psychically contribute to this thing without realizing it, knowing, or really caring that we do, and it receives it without really, it maybe knows, is, if it knows its own biology, but it would probably be like, oh, I meet this wise thing, and it's just this fucking slug thing that just slides across some kind of nasty matter. It's like, oh, this is what I'm powering? This is... 
or it might be something. It, it, whatever it is, it's beyond our comprehension to understand. As That's, I believe it does say I in the Bible to. somewhere that God says, "You can never know me." Which that if, if that if there was any divine moment where well, I, I the body that spoke means. to the cells that make up our existence, that would be what it meant. All right, so we're never going to meet. First of all, the idea that we <clears throat> cannot grasp what. God is, is what, it is what whoever rewrote that fucking book wanted us to think. No, not only, not only like can we not, not only can we not grasp what God is, but we are the closest thing on this planet. Well, that is man. actually, in a weird or way, the brother. most ridiculous thing is because it does say that somewhere in the book and then the, yeah, of course the beginning and then the rest of the book is God going, okay, now here's a list of shit I don't like. Here's a list of shit you shouldn't do. Here's a list of shit that... I know, you can actually pinpoint <clears throat> a place in the Bible where but I think the reason, somebody said, okay, we, 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 we gotta erase that. But I think what that. God is in the Bible is the protagonist of the that observes the unfolding of his creations evolution and mistakes and as it grows because it, it is chronicling in a way all of the rising and falling of all of man's earliest civilizations so now whether or not the details of little details are accurate don't really matter the overall point of the story is you know, well, this society decided to be fuckville, and it fell apart because the neighbors had to burn it down because they just wouldn't quit. And then this society here decided to do this fucked up shit. Uh, this society realized the, the first one realized you can't just walk around naked in front of everybody because uh, that creates problems. They they discovered shame because they got to know each other. Because it was the first time they ever like you know decided okay you pitch a thing here you pitch a thing here we all work together and make a thing here quit staring at my wife's tits asshole you know it it's knowledge it's the same and even that can even be interpreted as social media in a way because what is the symbol of social media and the technological revolution that led to it a fucking apple. And what has it done? It has, like, overloaded everyone with so much information, they don't know how to exist anymore. Einstein warned us. Educated idiots, he said. And that's, that's the biggest problem. Social media has got people that never should meet knowing each other. Like... It's given crazy people ways to communicate and amplify their own craziness with echo chambers. It's given uh, people just it, – it's, it's made people crazy because we all got to know each other when we probably shouldn't. Like this crazy motherfucker in Montana really ain't my problem. I live in Florida. Why do I give a shit? Why is this information relevant? I mean, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but in my day-to-day -day life, this asshole really means nothing. Information so, felt more viable when there was less of it, is what you're saying. And it makes sense. You know, when something gets mass-produced, it, it loses its value. Well, it became kind of a buyer's market, that whole information thing, because if you just want to believe something... You can go on the internet and find something to confirm it and go, yep, I was right. Yeah, I saw a video today that was uh, just kind of a compilation of all these uh, woke people self-affirming and, like, kind of describing how they got started with down. It was actually people who were transitioning from male to female and vice versa, and they were going down this, uh, they were talking about the rabbit hole. And, dude, it's scary as fuck. They're... Because it sounds a lot like how I found Wicca, and that's what it's scary. Because I was lost, you know. I felt betrayed by Christianity at the time, and it wasn't Christianity that betrayed me. It was it, it had betrayed it had betrayed me. It had betrayed my logic. I was asking questions that the Bible couldn't answer, so I needed to look elsewhere because nobody else could answer those questions either. And when I started looking elsewhere, I started discovering that, as 
fucked up as Christianity, Christianity can be, man. Like, a lot of the other ones are pretty fucked up, too. And I landed on Wicca because it's like, okay, I already feel like this is what I believe. This is what I was looking for. You know, it's not like I found something and it's like, okay, that makes sense. That I'm reading and that makes sense. Yeah, no, because that is not at all. It was more like, this is describing how I feel and what I see in my dreams, what I've been experiencing all my life, and this is me. Okay. Now, what these people are experiencing is they're lost in society, not spiritual, not spiritually lost so much, but I mean, for all intents and purposes, they probably are, and they are online. Like you were pointing out, and they're looking through just everything, you know, just kind of basically grabbing at straws of ideology for something to grasp onto that they feel like fits in their hand. And when they find this wokeism, when they find, the, and then they find, hey, these transition stories, and they're like, and one guy on there was actually like, I found a place where I can belong. It, Dude, it's it, it, wokeism works the same way cigarettes does. It targets kids' need or desire to be rebellious. That's that's why well, they all, need to be. Res- that's why be everything rebellious is part like, of our personal growth. That's something that I feel like if you don't is, go if you don't go through it as is, a teenager, but if you then, get the wrong person at the wrong time. It catches somebody in that stage, they could do a lot of damage to them. Yeah, and most that's, of us have people in that time of our lives. That are oh, objective to our rebellion, and that is healthy because you know when you're that age, your rebellion comes from a place of see. To then, this is something that you learn not just through Wicca, but through kind of more spir- more spiritual and mind based religions. Is that being intelligent isn't being emotional, and being intelligent isn't being smart. Being intelligent is knowing when to use both and how to use both together. Because emotion's just a concept your, your brain creates. Your emotion doesn't come from your heart. The reason that you feel things there when you're feeling emotions, that's all, that's all your nervous system. You know, this, this isn't even new shit. You know, we've known this since we started hacking folks apart and trying to and hunt and hooking shit to them to see what lights up. Now, so basically, what I'm saying is that uh, when you're that age, there's an emotion that manifests inside of you, and it's part of it's kind of post puberty. It's Kind of happens during puberty, but it is very long lasting. And it's so difficult for you at that age to accept it, to wrap your mind around it, that it turns into rebellion. And what I think that is, is you, that's the beginning of you trying to understand that you can't be a thinking person or a feeling person. You got to be both to be a reasonable person. You've got to be both to be a logical person, and you've got to be both to be a successful person. Uh, not uh, that means anything coming from me, but you know, and that, but that's what I've learned by watching successful people and listening to them is that they're not smart, and or they're not going on either. If you look at these woke people, man, it's like I just pointed out to Diana. Okay, and I just said, yeah, you know, Christians tend to get a little bit defensive. Where I feel like no, they should, dude, where, where I feel no, like instead Christian, of being, where I feel like instead of being defensive, they need to be exploring what I'm trying to say. Now, but instead of being a little bit defense, getting defensive, it, these woke people, when you challenge what they believe, they turn into fucking Roger Rabbit after he takes a shot of liquor. Ooh, he's fucking, they turn into the, the goddamn incredible Hulk you. because you're threatening. Because not only are you, you're threatening. To expose them for what they already know that they are, they're they're hiding from it. They're hiding. Some of them are probably hiding from it themselves. I got Sebastian Bach called me an asshole on Twitter because uh, Sebastian Bach, as in Skid Row guy, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, he was promoting the vaccine, and I questioned it, and I got into an argument with the fucking woke douchebags that follow. 
Sebastian Bach. And uh, they're waiting to cancel him for some reason, by the way. It's the only reason any woke person is following any celebrity. They're not your fucking fans. They're sharks waiting for you to bleed. I would stop placating them. Fish are personally. friends, not food. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. It takes about two seconds of you going, it, yeah, I don't really feel like I need the vaccine. Like, I'll... Yeah, I'll, my coffin's going to show up on there. Yeah, no, that's fine. I, they, they, they can cut it out. Cut that out. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Quit it, fucking around, man. It doesn't take but, like, a few... Disagree. It, it, you don't even have to be a dick. They were like, "I hope you die." No, you don't. Yeah. You don't have to say a word to them. You can just be holding a sign, and they'll be like, "They'll be bored by fuck you." Smiling fuck at an Indian is not okay to these people. Apparently, doing what now? Uh, that kid. I forget his fucking name. Uh, he had a weird name, but anyway, he um, uh, he's. Smiled at some fucking Indian while the Indian was screaming about fucking white people. And what a he was fucking just, asshole. <laughs> and he was just standing there listening to him. He didn't say a word. And they were like, it, it, they made a big deal. The, the media made a big deal and smeared this kid as like some kind of racist. He didn't do anything. And he sued CNN for like a shitload of money. Did you hear about the kid that wore a t shirt to school that said there are only two genders? Yeah. Dude, that kid's my fucking hero, man. And you know what? It, because Not only because of he's standing up and he's like, all right, I'm fighting this nonsense, but because he is proving, he brought out something that I was trying to tell my teachers when they were telling me I couldn't wear my fucking Ozzy Osbourne t-shirts into a public school. And that's that, and somebody, and his defense lawyer said and pointed it out, and he won the case, by the way, and it's true. And I was told that it wasn't as part of, you know, the, that Georgia bullshit that I keep talking about. Um, your rights aren't a jacket that you shed when you walk onto the school property. It, it, it was a t-shirt. It had nothing vulgar. It, it, it literally, his shirt was less vulgar than my Ozzy Osbourne t-shirt just because Ozzy Osbourne was on that t-shirt and he was kind of a vulgar guy back then. It, whatever. But... But, my mean, fashion rebellion was trench coats. I was kind of a dick. I mean, dude, one way, you, you were a, at, you were at a dick. You see the pictures of me in high school? <laughs> I had the fuck. I looked on, on dude, the other I looked hand, like I looked I like a member say, of Coal Chamber mixed I, with. I them. do love a nice trench coat. It wasn't a fake bullshit. Like I still wear fucking trench coats when I had I, one. I, I kind of got out of the trench coat thing. I, I wear I wear one if someone gives coat. me one. Actually, you know, you know what trench coats are good for. Fucking like minus twenty degree weather when you just, your jacket's not enough and you need something over it. Trench coat. Fucking. Uh, Fuck I don't know, man. They look cool. I love reaching behind this thing and pulling something out of my pocket, making everybody in the room nervous. Yeah. I love. <laughs> here's another thing I love doing. Whenever I say my shadow, Have like opening people? the trench coat, like Batman and flapping it. Like, dude, back That's in the also early, a lot of back fun. in the early 2020s, I think everybody thought that we were going to fucking shoot up the place when we walked into Corums to eat. Because <laughs> <laughs> we both had trench coats. We both had trench coats. We both had hair about down to our fucking asses. Well, look, to our credit, we didn't shoot anybody. And not only. It really had less to do with the assholes that, you know, shot the shot up the school with Columbine, and more to do with like they're just fucking awesome. I mean, look, I'll give some credit where it's due. The name Trenchcoat Mafia was pretty fucking cool. I, you know, but like there's you also had the Matrix, you had the Crow, they had a lot of things that made me think trench coats were fucking cool. If anything, those assholes kind of fucked them up. I'm sorry they made them popular, but at the same time, looking back on it, it was kind of a dick thing to do at the time to be like, yeah, fuck you, I'll wear a trench coat. It's like school and shit. But I know, you know, when we were when we were teenagers, you know, we were always like fucking fucking cops harassing us, you know, acting like we're up to no good. But here's the thing. 
out of Usually my social are. group, out of my social group, there might have been two or three of us that were not up to no good at any given point in time. We we were all we were all delinquents. We were just smart enough never to really get caught. And when we did get caught, we were just like, "He did it! Oh shit, where'd he go?" <laughs> we were fucking smart. <laughs> yeah, man, he took off running. Yeah, you smell that that, that, that pot. That's that's him. Just follow that smell of pot. I never had to deal with cops in that way. Every time I'm dealing yeah, with cops, you haven't lived in Georgia. That's true. Of course, living in Florida, they're hard to avoid here, too. Yeah, well, they're people here. Or at least they, they're, they act like people. They, it's a whole different ball game up there, man. They, If you call them, this is what you're doing. If you call them, they show up looking to incriminate you in Georgia every fucking time. That's why I was raised to say, to try to handle things myself. Don't call the cops. Yeah, it's not an exaggeration. Just a couple of years, just a couple of years Georgia, ago, Georgia, probably just Columbus. I I would like to assume that, but I've I've heard horror stories from all over Georgia, so yeah. it's part of that it, that bureaucracy, and it's always been like that, man. It's like not just in the wake of defund the police. Yeah, those cops were always like that. There, it depends on where you're at with what kind of cops you're dealing with. Like, if you live in some nice beach community and the cops are those dudes in shorts and bicycles, I, I doubt they're really running around just beating people up because they don't fucking need to. Everybody's on a beach really having run fun. Around, the cops don't really run around beating the shit out of people who don't do anything wrong. It's not really, even if they ever did, they definitely can't fucking do it now. So. Uh, but no, uh, Some, the coolest cop I ever met in Columbus. When you think about the people they deal with, uh, they should be beating the shit out of some of them. Oh, I mean, yeah, they should, but... I mean, they're, they're, they're not supposed to, but... Well, they should be beating the shit out of people who deserve it. Well, that's the thing, is you're not really supposed to be able... They're not supposed to determine that you need... They're supposed to be professional, they're supposed to... It, it is supposed to if be a, a fucking procedure. Guy, if, if a guy, if a guy they're trying to arrest is being the being shit a, out yeah. of them, being the shit out of them, and trying to go for their gun, yeah, Billy Club the fucking asshole down before he kills somebody. I even get the. It, it's just their job. I even. I'm not talking. That. I'm not talking about hey you over there smoking that joint. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. No, it, it doesn't work like that. It probably does in some places. No, you're, you're <laughs> it a cop in the places. inner city. I'm sure there's a life cycle. That uh, you kind of go through personality wise. That kind of starts indicating when it's time to quit. What being a cop? Yeah, I'm sure it starts out. I, I I would imagine it's a lot like the growth of characters in Full Metal Jacket, where like at first you're like Leonard, and then by the time you're out of the academy, you're kind of like cowboy, where you're still like in a good mood and just making the best of it. But then you start making a turn after, like, you know, 10 years or so, where you turn into Private Joker. You start having, like, kind of a morbid sense of humor about it. And then you turn into Animal Mother around, like, the 18-year mark where you're a fucking dick. Where you'll still say, you know, shit like, thank God for the sickle cell, huh? But you'll still run into, like, a burning building and shoot at crackheads trying to, you know, save kids and shit. But then around there's a certain point where you probably turn into that dude that's doing a puppet show with the corpse going, I love the little commie bastards. Really, I do. It's like, you need, that guy needs to retire now. <laughs> He's lost his fucking mind. I, you can, I can only imagine you can live in the shit like that so long before you crack. So, you're right back. Alright, I think he's taking a piss break. See how long I've been going. Now all of you, get the fuck out now before I get too mad to turn back. All of y'all, now get the fuck out. Come on, you motherfuckers. Get the fuck out. Randy, you turning son of a bitch. Go fucking practice, Randy! Come on, Morris, you fucking genius! Get the fuck up and get the fuck out of here! God damn it! <laughs> 